Hello there, we have uh, uh, a short video here. Uh, I don't think it'll take too long. Uh, and I want to talk about how we can take our graphical display and make everything in it larger or smaller. And to do this, we use the scale function in processing. And we can illustrate that with a couple of quick examples. And uh, so here I have a sketch right in here. And this is exactly the same sketch that's shown in this example uh, here for scaling. Uh, void setup. Now the no, it's not exactly the same. I've uh, changed the size to 400 by 400 instead of the too small 120 by 120. Okay, we do our void draw, and uh, we're going to translate uh, the uh, origin to the position of the mouse. Now, here's where scale is called. Scale mouse x divided by 60. So, um, that means that whatever the mouse position is inside this box, we're going to divide it by 60, and then we're going to scale the graphic by that amount. So, when mouse x is equal to 60, when we're at x equals 60, up here in, inside the position of the mouse. Our scale is 1 and the box is exactly the same shape that it would have been without the scale. And, um, and then as we move past x equals 60 with the mouse, the, the diagram will expand beyond the size that it would have been. Now here let me let me illustrate that. Let me just take out the, the scale operation here first and we'll run the sketch. Okay, so here's our sketch, and you can see what size the the box is. So uh, x equals 60 is probably around here somewhere. Okay, now let me put the scale back in here. So that's this diagram exactly as it, this, this sketch exactly as written here. Now I run. Okay, so we start off with a very, very small rectangle here as we start moving X. We, it gets bigger, bigger, bigger. We get up here. This is about, like I said, where X equals 60 is, and that rectangle's the size that it would have been before. But now as I keep moving across, you see that the, the, the rectangle is getting larger and larger and larger. Now, also note that the boundary on the rectangle is getting larger. So we're getting a larger rectangle, and the thickness on the boundary, that is, is getting larger. Okay, now, we may not want that to happen. We may want to keep that thickness of the boundary to be the same as we expand the size of the rectangle. And we can change that with stroke weight. We can set stroke weight also we can take whatever the stroke weight is and that would be one let's say and divide and we can divide whatever the stroke weight is by the same value mouse x divided by 60. so in doing that what happens is as the boundary in the box expands because of the scaling up here this continues to shrink it back down so the stroke weight doesn't change. So let's run this sketch so you can see what's happening there. Okay, so here I am. As I come in on the left, we get our small box. We get larger and larger and larger up in here. It's about the size that it would have been without using scaling at all. Now you see that as we move this across, while the box gets larger, this, the thickness of the boundary d remains the same. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how we can do something there. Now, and that's discussed here in this example, keeping strokes consistent. Uh, they do it a little bit differently than I do it over in this sketch, but the end result is the same. 
where they have defined a variable called scalar, and then they take scalar is mass x divided by 60, which is what I have here, mass x divided by 60, and then they take stroke weight 1 divided by scalar, whereas I just did stroke weight is 1 divided by mass divided by 60, which is what the scalar variable was. Okay, now, uh, so that's how that works. Now there's one more, and this is really important, if we have several different items in a sketch and some things we may want to rotate and other things we may not want to rotate some things we may want to scale and other things we may not want to scale and we use two other commands to make that happen the push and pop command okay to isolate the effects of a transformation so they don't affect later commands, we use push matrix and pop matrix functions. When push matrix is done, it what happens is uh, processing stores all of the scale and rotate and, and translate settings. It stores them and, and so that Later on in the sketch, if we execute pop matrix, it then pulls them out and reapplies them to what's to the to the sketch to what we're doing subsequently in the sketch. And um, again, probably to illustrate that, we use an example here. So here's an example of a sketch. Let me just copy it. We do avoid setup here. All the way down to here copy let me come back here there we go let me change this to like 400 400 there we go we change the size so the first thing we do we enter void draw we're going to store whatever this the rotate translate and scale settings are now we're going to translate again to the uh, changing the origin to the position of the mouse. We're going to draw our box, a 30 by 30 box. And uh, this is a relatively small box, by by the way. I know, well, yeah, it is kind of small. Uh, pop matrix. Now, pop matrix pulls the old settings out before we tr did the translation to the mouse. Um, now we translate to a different location, 3510, and we then draw a smaller rectangle. And then when void draw now executes the next loop, we're storing this position, and then we are translating again. Notice that we, we're not the first time through we haven't done any translation. Uh, here, we've done this translation right here to 3510. Let's run this and see what happens. So there we are. There are our two boxes. We have our big box, which is the one drawn first. We have our small one, which is right here. And now as we move this across, We're just translating. We're not scaling. There's no scale operation in that sketch anywhere. But notice that the small rectangle stays right here at 1515. Um, I'm sorry. Um, the, the it's it, it is translated to 3510. Or 1515 is the size of the small rectangle and it is located at the origin, but the origin has been moved to 3510. Okay, so now might be interesting here to see, does this change? I'm curious. I want to run this. I want to put right here after we, after we have done this, I want to do a um, pop matrix. Pop matrix a 
Nope, I, I'm sorry. That's not right. A push matrix. Yeah, that's right. Pot matrix. Okay, so now I'm doing a pot matrix after this. And pot matrix restores uh, the... Um, Well, I'm not sure that's doing anything. Let's see what happens. Okay, that may be a, I think I'm doing a dumb thing here. Let's see. Now, notice this. We're not drawing, but we have a runtime exception. Okay, you see what's going on here is that we're required to have a push matrix before every pop matrix okay so with that and I'll just delete this there we go okay so that answered uh, the question I had about push matrix and pop matrix so we we can't do a uh, uh, a pop matrix without having first done a push matrix now let me go back, let me run this as it is. I run, see we have our two drawings here, and then we go like that. Okay, now I think there's probably some little extra complications that might arise here as we go along. I have personally, uh, I'm trying to remember back over the years, I haven't used this too much, so there are probably some hidden complications that um, I'm not aware uh, that can happen. Uh, I'm not going to do this particular example with the robot, um, and uh, but you can go through it. And then uh, I think that's it. Uh, after this, we're going to talk about how to put media in the uh, uh, in a sketch. Uh, I don't know that we're going to get too much into that here this semester. So, okay, with that, and, uh, I'll see you next time.